Zach, welcome oh. back to the show. It's never going to stop being weird interviewing you. Yeah, because, on the other side of the fence, right? Yeah, well, we did so many shows together. So, again, well, thank you for coming in. Thanks for sacrificing your lunch That's okay. today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Type 8. We are going to talk about the Type 8. We uh, are, um, yeah. But we've got some other bits we want to cover really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, over the weekend, yes. uh, as I'm sure you're aware, that was the fourth Titan, Haddad. Yeah. So, kaboom. Haddad has gone kaboom. Um, yeah, it was great to see, again, a lot of engagement, a lot of players. Um, get in, you know, in position, ready to sort of take those pictures and, and sort of take the videos. I've, have you noticed as well, like, as the Titans have gone down one after the other, the picture quality has got better and better because now yeah. people are like, if I sit about here, <laughs> I yeah. can start yeah. filming the, this. The sort of minutia of exactly where they need to be to get that great shot without risking the ship at the same yeah. time, right? Got to feel bad for the Thargoids. Sitting there. Once they were the most terrifying force, and now we've got commands going, yeah, I know, but we're just going to sit back here and get a picture of you as you die. We're just going to just going to watch yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny you say that. It is... Interesting. The Titans just seem to be sort of. Are they just sitting back and letting this happen? I, don't know. I mean, it's, I mean, they seem to be. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I just, I would just be like, you know, don't get. Was it Hans? I said that's great, but don't get too cocky. Don't get cocky. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but it's great to watch, and it's good to see the the Thugs get a bit of a kick in after giving it to us for so it long. It is. I know. It's been it's been years now. You know, it's good to see humanity fighting back yeah. a little bit. And what we did see around the Titans uh, was the brand new ship variant. The Python was the Python Mark II was in and around doing it doing was. a bit of work around the Titan hearts and putting a big old dent in her dad. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, the Python Mark II is now uh, for uh, early access if you want to pick it up. And we have a little trailer for you, so have a look at this. There we go, and that is the Python Mark II. So very, very popular amongst our players. I know yep. it's popular amongst me, and I've done the whole meme thing where Chieftain Mark II, I can't, I can't help but say the Mark II does look better than the Chieftain. It's it's a tough one, right? I mean, I still have my loyalties to the Crate, crate Phantom, but I think the Python Mark II is, is probably up there for sure. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about the Python Mark II, and we're talking about new ship, new ship variants. Mm -hmm. And I've got you on here to talk about the, the ship that I accidentally kind of mentioned. <laughs> ruin at the, end ruin of the, the marketing plans as always. But that's what I do, mate. Um, <laughs> at the end of the last show, we talked about the Type 8. Mm -hmm. um, now, look, we're saying variants, right? And I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but it's a new ship. I don't, I don't care, right? It's a new ship. I mean, the Python Mark II kind of look different. It's lovely. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's a wonderful ship. But this, this is something different. It's a new um, ship. And we're going to start showing you... Now, just to be clear, chat, we're going to be talking about the design aesthetics of the Type 8. We're not going to go into too many details about... Um, there are some bits you're going to share, um, but we're not going to do the full capacity and, and, and capability of the ship. Um, that will be to probably the next show. But this show, we want to talk through maybe some of the hardware that goes into actually designing the variants and, and, and these ships that are going into the game. Because a lot of work does go into it. I think you're going to see some of that now. And yep. Zach, you spent some time with Chris Gregory, didn't you? Yeah. Um... Um, yeah, I mean, so, yeah. Chris and the art team, as always, done a stellar job um, of putting together something that really fits within the world of Elite Dangerous whilst having its own unique take. Um, so, yeah, thanks again, Chris and the design team yep. for sort of spending time to sit down with me and talk about the process of not only, you know, this ship, but how do they just work in general? It's really interesting to yep. sort of hear about that kind of stuff. So I think before we show the first image, and again, all of this is whip chat, yeah. work in progress, not final, et cetera, et cetera, yada, 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 you know what we're saying. However... So before you show the first shot, um, should we talk a little bit about this? Should we do the, should we do the unique bits now or should we do it at the end? Um, let's talk, we can talk a little bit about how they came about choosing yeah. the Type 8, right? Okay. Um, so, um, as with any new ship within the game, um, the first thing the design team do is say, okay, let's have a look at the sort of holes within the space we've got of, of ships within the game, right? And, and what sort of hole can we plug? Um, and for the Python, that was combat. We, we felt like we needed a new sort of PvP ship to challenge the Mamba. Um, whereas now, uh, we've decided we need a new trade ship. Um, and it has some functionality that makes it fit a certain... So I thought they just did it because they missed a the number out. I yeah, thought it was Type that, 7, that Type 9, 
type 10 and went, oh, we've missed a type 8. Right. You know, Holy Grail. Like, one, two, four, three, sire, three. <laughs> I thought it was that, but obviously not. No, there's a reason for it, right? Yeah. Um, and obviously, we made the combat. We made the Python as a combat ship. We know a lot of players are into combat. However, Elite Dangerous is very much a sort of... Choose blaze your own, own trail, right? Yeah, blaze your own trail. So there's a lot of players that don't engage with combat at all, and we want to make sure that we're listening to you guys as well and providing content for you. Um, and that is where the Type 8 is going to come in as a right. really good trade ship. So we'll talk about some of the, the some of the key features, two things we're going to talk about, or we'll talk about after. But I think we should show them the first. Sure. We're, so this is the first, so this is called a grey box image mm -hmm. of the ship. So you ready for this chat? This is the first look at the Type 8 transporter. Hooray! Wee wee. Now we've got more room to show you, chat. But yep. this, I think, just initial glance, it's radically different, right? <laughs> I've never seen anything like this in Elite. When I when I first heard about the Type 8, I was planning I, like I expected it to look like the Type 7. You know, like you know, as we sort of saw the like you said, the Python Mark II is similarish to the Python, yeah. you know, a variant. Um, whereas you can tell it's from the same family, right? Exactly. Yeah. And with this, I think you can tell it. Uh, you know, especially later on, you can see that it yes. is like a lake on design, but it's so unique and and different within the world of Elite. I, like I think something that the design and the art team said was. You know, it's cool. To, it's nice to have a, a really cool combat ship that you're flying around with, but our trade players want to look cool at the same time, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. I mean, I, I, when I saw this, I mean, and we're going to move on to the next one in a minute, I got strong vibes in me, just from the grey boxing, right? So this is, this is um, and again, we'll talk about this later on when I, I talk about how clever I think the art team are, because it's like clay, right? And you get the initial shape and then they go on, which we're going to show you in a minute. Um, I saw this silhouette and I was like, I have never seen a ship like this in Elite Dangerous. And immediately, I think it's like the positioning of, excuse me, I'm going to cough here. <coughs> excuse me, chat. Um, the position of the, the, under, the underhung cockpit yeah. and how you're going to see stuff. Um, and then just the engine housing, how it looks. I was like, wow, this looks absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, I think, as you mentioned, the cockpit is in a really unique place. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But I think... Another thing to mention about, you know, aside from this being one of the coolest looking ships in the game, I think um, it's going to be really exciting for trade commanders for two real reasons. So yep. um, be, it being a V2 ship, it has the sort of enhanced SEO capabilities. So that's going to make a world of difference if you're... Speed trading. Exactly. Speed trading within systems, you're going to be all over the place. Um, but also, I think potentially the most exciting news for sort of trade commanders is that this is going to be a medium ship. Um, so medium pad. Medium pad, which means that you've got a lot of freedom in terms of like choosing your trade route, deciding where you want to go. Um, but yeah, it's medium, but it still will have a significant cargo capacity. So, I mean, when you talk about um, how it changes, I mean, the SEO has already made fundamental changes to Elite Dangerous players yep. as it stands. I think for this with trade, and trade in particular, because it's all about how, much, how many credits you can make, right, and how quick you can do it, and like yep. most efficient runs. So I think that coupled with the fact you're going to have a high capacity cargo ship that fits on a medium pad that does has SEO. I think there's going to be a lot of meta going on, like working out routes, chains, what to trade, where yep. to trade, what the best. I mean, what runs are going to be the best runs to do. Yep. Um, I think it's going to be it's it's a really cool design meets functionality with yeah. the ship. It fits that space, right? Though the dev team said that they wanted to, they you know, acknowledge that there was a gap there, and they've. Yeah, they've they got a ship it in. to plug in. All right, so I think we've got some more stuff to show you right now. So I think if we have a little scroll down to the next picture, uh, that will help us greatly. There we go. Yes. Um, so this here is the first kind of, what do we call this? is a render shot, right? This is a render yeah, shot of yeah. the Type 8. Yeah. Um, so just the, the difference between the grey box <laughs> and this yeah. blows my mind every time I see it because you get the shape and silhouette of the grey box and then you get this. And when I talk about sculpting clay, Mm -hmm. How they do this is incredible. So, Zach, talk to me about what we're looking at here. Yeah, so, I mean, as you said, it's almost like you see it come to life here, right? And I think there's so much inspiration that we'll talk about in a second. But one thing I did want to point out um, before we get onto that inspiration is, is on those two sort of really iconic prongs, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of your turrets and hard points are going to be. Um, and so when you're in that cockpit view, you're going to have those arms in front of you and you're going to have that sort of unique view um, of you know your your hard points firing, yeah. it's going to be super cool. And, and I think you've mentioned it in the past, where you know you spend a lot of your time in Elite Dangerous within within your ship in your cockpit. Yeah. Um, and this is giving you a really really like different I mean, look at the it's, game. It's one of the things with the cockpit for many commanders, myself included, I guess. Your ship is just an extension of you, right? Yeah, that, that is that is that is you. So any change to that visual aesthetic is huge, right? So you'll be we're now be able to see the landing gear deploy. 
uh, what's your we uh, weapons or hard points to de deploy, seeing those those prongs coming into land, which is going to be really important, like working out where you can put this, this yes. ship down. Um, I just think anything like that at all just feels like a vastly different experience mm -hmm. um, for players. And I th I'm really excited to see what players do with this. And then, of course, any any other, other cool stuff they want to put in their ship afterwards, like yeah, uh, you'll be able to see it. And I think you make a good point about you know coming into land with this being a sort of big cargo ship. I think uh, sometimes with, with newer players, potentially, it, landing is quite a difficult, especially for me. You're talking about me, aren't you? You are both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think landing is quite a challenge. Um, sometimes, you know, experienced yeah. players, fine. But... With this new, with this cockpit view, you actually can get a really good view of what's underneath you, yeah. um, which should make it quite relatively easy to to land this ship um, safely. Your cargo is safe um, on the land. Well, I mean, even with me flying, it's pretty well, safe, even with a better view. But I mean, look at this, look at this shot. I mean, just yeah. we talked about the ship's looking sexy, right? And yeah. it's a it's a functional cargo ship transporter, right? Still looks sexy, right? This yeah. looks it does. You'd be happy to fly this. I don't know, you know, again. I don't, no. I don't speak ill of the Type 7, but when you when if it's sat next to a lineup, if, if you had to take one out on a date, it's not going to be a Type 7, <laughs> no, is it? I think it's a clean winner. Um, a clean winner. And I think with these images, if you haven't already guessed inspiration wise, yes, I think it's a great inspiration. About it. um, so I think, as you can tell, a lot of inspiration was actually taken from just modern day, you know, industrial machinery. Yeah. Um, as you can tell by the sort of paneling. Um, so what the team have done, Chris and the team, is actually remove a lot of the external paneling so that you can see a lot of the sort of engines and tools and machinery, um, just to sort of get that more industrial feel. But apart from that, there is also another big inspiration that the team uh, have taken for this ship. And I think you, this is what you were talking about straight away, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if you haven't guessed chat, uh, inspiration came from uh, Ron Cobb, who I believe was a, is, is, was a really successful uh, sci-fi concept artist. Um, primarily, I believe, uh, famous for uh, Alien, amongst other things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think you noticed that. I, I mean, I saw the away. shapes. I mean, I'll be honest. I, I saw the shapes, and then as soon as I saw the colour, I immediately went to the power loader prongs from Aliens, yep. and then obviously there's the Betty from Alien Resurrection. We don't talk too much about that film, but um, but it, the aesthetic design is fantastic. It's just it feels used. It feels like a, a working ship. It, it's it's a bit used. It's mm -hmm. a bit bruised. It's got. It feels like it's it's run a, 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 a million light years already, and that's what I love about this ship. It's what I like about all Lacon ships, actually, yeah. um, is they just they speak to me on an aesthetic level. I don't like I've said this before. I don't like the super sleek designs. I don't like the Mamba. I don't like the Courier. I don't, right. Not because I think the ships are terrible. I just don't like the design. Yeah. I don't feel lived in. Uh, this feels lived in. You can almost imagine this landing on a you know a desolate rocky planet and mm -hmm. doing some trade. It's just a wonderful wonderful design piece yeah and i think um a little another little sort of easter egg is is the render obviously the colors aren't particularly final they may be they may not be mm -hmm. um, but the yellow we've gone for here is another nod to uh, the nostromo which apparently was uh, initially uh, ron cobb had the idea that it would be yellow oh really film. i never so, knew that i never knew that i'm a big fan of it that's a bit of trivia i did not know mm. uh, so uh, yes yeah, fact checkers are wrong um, yeah. but uh, I, I imagine that's pretty right i mean i think i saw the picture of the, the betty was also yellow so i'd imagine yeah, uh, you're probably absolutely bang on there. Yeah, yeah. so there we go. But it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, looking ship, and also you've got something we we like to talk about, which is greebling. Greebling, yes, it's a, a great word, um, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of sort of sci-fi fans might be aware of what greebling is. But if you're not, um, take think about maybe the Death Star from from the sort of original Star Wars film, and how the sort of close-ups of the Death Star had all that sort of detailing on the model. Um, and basically, it's just sort of lowering and raising elements and and adding that sort of blocky feel to make it just feel much more like you said sort of lived in and realistic mm -hmm. and you can see that um with a type a you know especially on the prongs there the sort of as you saw in the block out it was very much like you know a rectangular you saw yeah. the idea right yeah. but it really comes to life when you add that greebling and the detail throughout but it's, it's again it's like like i said it's like they get the initial shape uh, mm -hmm. and then you just carve away until they get something that sort of fits the aesthetic but i i genuinely genuinely love this and again Although I, you know, I speak ill of the Type Seven, you can still see it's part of the family. You yeah, can still you see can. it's clearly a lake on ship. Uh, still fits quite nicely in that that gap. We have now fulfilled the Type Eight. It now makes sense. It's yep. not a mystery. Yeah. Um, so there we go. That is a a, a first look, I guess. Yeah. Uh, at the the Type Eight. Um, just to recap, um, it's we next show mm -hmm. we will hopefully. Hopefully. Be able to show you this in action. Yeah. Um, we're both moving around a little bit. Um, like very much, I think we did this with the Python yeah, as well, didn't we? Yeah, similar. Um, probably hopefully try and get you a cockpit shot to get an idea of what the cockpit yep. will look like as you're moving around. Um, but is SEO enabled? Mm -hmm. 
wheel foot and a medium pad mm -hmm. will have a great capacity. Yep. Um, so it's going to really change the game in terms of trading. Yep. Um, and it looks super cool. And it will look super cool. <laughs> like uh, you can wear your trucking cap. You can. You can look pretty cool pulling up to your to your whatever space station or fleet carrier you're going to be Medium, up any to medium. On a medium pad. Yep. Um, and you can, yeah, you can make some serious credits. Um, Zach, it's thank you so much for coming no and chat to us. Um, thank you as well to Chris and mm -hmm. all the art team yep. and everyone working on, on Elite Dangerous for for keep giving us all this information and let us badge you for this stuff because yep. I know your time is precious. Um, I mentioned next show we might come back and talk about. Uh, I'll show the, the Type 8 in action, but we mm. might have some other bits to talk about. Potentially. Uh, potentially. Uh, so will you come back, potentially share another lunchtime with me? I know you love spending lunch times with me. I love exactly. spending lunch times with you, mate, anytime. Um, uh, but yeah, let's, um, let's do that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that first look at the Type 8. I think we can all agree it's a, a fantastic looking ship. Yep. Um, like a generally, like trade ships don't necessarily do it for me, but again, Chris and the team, <laughs> I'm, I'm conflicted, I'm yep. conflicted. New ship every um, time. It's going to be great. Um, all right, Zach, thank you very much.